To God be the glory, to God be the glory, great things he has done. With his blood he has saved us, with his power he has raised us. To God be the glory, great things he has done. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Sunday in Pentecost. I take this opportunity to welcome you. Welcome everyone from wherever you are, whether you be on Facebook, whether you be on your phone, wherever you are. I welcome you to bask in the glory of Jesus Christ. His risen blood is spilled all over so that today we can enjoy it. So I welcome you this morning to First United Methodist Church of Elgin, and I hope and pray that something that is said today will transform you, will give you hope, and will build your faith. Welcome. Good morning. <clears throat> a couple of quick announcements for those of you who are here and those who are watching um, our online version. Uh, we are currently in the middle of our 2020 stewardship campaign, so be on the lookout because paper commitment cards will be arriving in the mail this week. Uh, for your safety and convenience, also the form may be filled out on the FUMC Elgin website um, as a fillable PDF. So if you have any questions or need help filling out that form, reach out to Amy in the office. Uh, that phone number, if you are listening online, that phone number is 847-741-0038, or you can email her at adidrickson at fumcelgin.org. Um, there's also a contact us portion on the website as well. Um, for those of you who are watching online, you may not be able to see or tell, but we are in, doing in-person worship. We have resumed. Um, all services are socially distanced, and obviously masks are required. Due to limited capacity, 
Registration for each service is required in advance. Uh, that registration opens on Monday mornings and it continues through Friday afternoon. Uh, we've had some open slots available during these services, so each service has not been full. So if you are interested in coming, um, we would love to see you here. You can visit fumcelgin.org and click on the Save Your Seat banner, or you can call the church office to register as well. Uh, FUM's first UMC Elgin will celebrate All Saints Day on Sunday, November 1st. So if you'd like to have your name of a loved one read during the worship service, once again, the theme here is contact Amy in the church office, um, either by calling or that email address, uh, adidrickson at fumcelgin.org. Additionally, several different church groups are meeting weekly via Zoom calls. So, for example, the Monday morning Blue Box Coffee Group, the Wednesday night Guys Stuff Crew, uh, Thursday morning Bible Reflection, uh, Women's Reflection Bible Study, all have weekly Zoom meetings. Additionally, uh, Pastor Felicia is holding a weekly prayer call on Thursday afternoons via Zoom. So if you visit the church website, fumcelgin.org, you can find more information about those meetings or... You guessed it, Amy in the office can help you figure out how to get to those meetings. Um, and lastly, uh, every Monday morning, uh, Dr. Felicia is releasing a new motivational moment uh, from the Bible designed to help you make the Bible an essential part of your everyday life. Um, look for those on the website, or if you are part of the, uh, our FUMC Elgin Facebook page, those do come live and are published on Monday mornings. And that is it for announcements this morning. Good morning. If you might have noticed at the call to worship, I've kind of switched things up a little bit. The first line is yours. So please join me in the call to worship. We come broken. You, Lord, you are the God of hope. We come fearful. Lord, you are the God of peace. We come cynical. Lord, you are the God of redemption. We come empty. Lord, you are the only one who can make us whole. I encourage you to follow along with the words of our songs this morning. They'll be on the screens, I believe. Um, follow along with these words and really let them, let them speak to you this morning.
Please join me in the opening prayer. Great giver of life, hear our prayer. In your great mercy, grant us release from worry and fear. Strengthen us by the power of your love and enable us to be healers in word and deed. When we are unable to be healers, remind us to do no harm through harsh judgment benign neglect, insensitive looks, or careless speech. Let the power of love guide us in the ways of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. It has been so good to see, well, sort of see, everyone's faces back at church, even though we are open to a limited capacity. For those of you watching at home, we miss you. We love you, and we can't wait to see you as well. Please know that oh, if you're a friend, if you're a new friend, we can't wait to see you as well also. Please know that you have not been forgotten. Also, please know that even though we are not all able to be here, the work of the church does continue. Giving is not only a form of worship, it is also a form of faith in saying that we know that God is good, we know that we have been blessed, and we want to extend that blessing to others through the work of the church. If you would like to contribute to the many ministries here at First United Methodist Church, and as we contribute to ministries around the world, you may contact us at fumcelgin.org. I'll repeat that, fumcelgin.org. There is a place to give on the website, or you may mail your offering into the church. We truly understand that these are difficult times, and we are grateful for all that you have done and can do. So please pray with me as we bless our offerings. Gracious God, you provide us with hope in a world often plagued with despair. Receive these gifts that they will be transformed into messages and acts of hope to people in our community and across the world. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to be stewards of hope in the name of Jesus, the bearer of good news, we pray. Amen. Thy mercy, my God, is the theme of my song, the joy of my heart and the boast of my tongue. Thy free grace alone from the first to the last Hath won my affection and bound my soul fast Without thy sweet mercy I could not live here Sin would reduce me to utter despair, but through thy free goodness my spirits revive, and he that first made me still keeps me alive. Thy mercy is more than a match for my heart, which wonders to feel its own hardness depart. Dissolved by thy goodness, I fall to the ground and weep for the praise of the mercy I found.
Great Father of mercy, thy goodness I own, and the covenant love of thy crucified Son. All praise to the Spirit, whose whispers divine seal mercy and pardon and righteousness mine. All praise to the Spirit, whose whisper divine seals mercy and pardon and righteousness mine. Scripture reading this morning is from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. I'll be reading from the message, and the scripture will tell us that as much as things change, they also remain the same. My dear, dear friends, I love you so much. I do want the very best for you. You make me feel such joy, fill me with such pride. Don't waver, stay on track, steady in God. I urge Yodia and Syntyche to iron out their differences and make up. God doesn't want his children holding grudges. And, oh yes, Syzygos, since you're right there to help them work things out, do your best with them. These women worked for the message hand in hand with Clement and me, and with the other veterans, worked as hard as any of us. Remember their names are also in the book of life. Celebrate God all day, every day. I mean, revel in him. Make it as clear as you can to all you meet that you're on their side, working with them and not against them. Help them see that the master is about to arrive. He could show up at any minute. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of our life. Summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Here ends the reading of the scripture. Friends, this is a moment when wherever you are, whether you be online, if you're in the church this morning, you're driving down the street, you're at McDonald's, getting your breakfast, if you would pause for a moment to share your joys and concerns, lift them up to Jesus so we can pray for you. So this is a moment where you can share your joys and your concerns based upon the culture of your congregation. sister has come home from the hospital after having COVID, and she's recuperating at home uh, comfortably. Great joy. My daughter has come home from college to spend the weekend with us, and she goes to North Central, so we're very fortunate that she's home and she's healthy and her school continues on. My 
sister just lost one of her children this week, and I pray that God gives her the strength to get through this. Your joys and your concerns, your praises, don't leave here and say, I wish I did. I have a praise. I think it's so wonderful that in this time when we're not actually able to be here, we've been able to still install a brand new boiler and install a brand new parking lot and do some repairs in our, in our church, in our marvelous facility where we can come and worship God. And what a, what a blessing that is that we can do that. I just want to share a, a, a thank you to God for my daughter, Sable, who's been on this journey with me. Sometimes I know it's probably tired and it's not cool, you know, for a young adult. Give God praise and thanks for her being here. Is there anyone else? If not, could we just say amen? Amen. Through the storms of life, those Oh God, the storms that we cannot understand, we bless your name. For those that have lost family members, oh God, we stand with them. We stand with her sister who has lost a family member. Let us as a church remember that you, oh Christ, stood with us. Father God, this morning, we just want to thank you for those that have recovered from COVID. Thank you for the good news that college students can come home and are healthy. Father God, oh, the world is changing. Those storms are raging. We thank you for standing by us. Jesus Christ, this moment, I just want to thank you and I want to praise you for everyone who is in my earshot. This morning, wherever they are, those who are voiceless, whose voices we cannot hear and whose concerns we cannot hear, most beautiful, most gracious God, we know you are hearing. For those whose praises we cannot hear, God, we know you are receiving. But, oh God, we want to thank you most of all for the blood of Jesus Christ which was shed so that we can have this moment, this moment when we can have hope, we can come and worship. We can come and commune with you. We can worship you and know that when we leave here, if we believe that Jesus Christ died for us, if we believe that his blood was shed for us, for our cares, our concerns, what our praises are, we use them, knowing that whatever we do with them is kingdom building, if it is done in your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Good morning again, everyone. It's always good, always good to be in the house of the Lord. This is a time when you can an amen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All righty. So um, by my accent, you know, I'm Jamaican. But um, I want to just thank Pastor Felicia Leboy and you beautiful people of this congregation for having me here today. It is always a pleasure, always a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord. But sometimes we take it for granted, right? But then the other day we had an itch, right? We just needed to get back here. So I think you guys are even more privileged than my church. We haven't gone back there yet. But it's always a pleasure to be the house of the Lord. So as Cindy said to me, um, you know, things switch up a little bit. For me, yes, I do the, I do the sermon text first. So if you could the bulletin to the sermon text. And when, if you, if, when you have it, if you could all say amen. Amen. The sermon text is from Matthew 22, verses 1 through 14. We use an NIV version. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them, Come. But they refused to come. Then he, that's the king, sent some more servants and said, tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted calf, cattle have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the banquet. But they paid no attention and went off. One to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. God was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burnt their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not come, did not deserve, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you can find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all people they could find the bad as well as the good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing, a wedding, wearing wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? How did you get in here? Without your wedding clothes, friend, the man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited but few are chosen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to thee, O God, for this, thy holy words. Amen.
as a teacher, you know, I know one of the greatest danger is to give an essay, a one-word essay, you know, speechless. It can go any way, right? I can be talking about to have speech or not to have speech. But this morning, for our time here, I want to focus on verses 11 through 14 so that when we go home in our spaces, you know, on our work time, we can reflect on those verses. So I will read a little bit from verse 11, the man was speechless. And as we drove here this morning, I remember a time when my daughter watched the Disney movie, so I had to ask her permission, she's no longer a child, to see if I could use her as my example today. She would rewatch Disney movies, watch them, watch them, watch them over and over and over again. So as a parent, I made sure I watched each Disney movie to see if there was a message in these movies. Because if a child is watching a Disney movie 15 or 20 times, what it simply means is that something subliminal is getting into that child head and will form that child's character. So the Disney movie Aladdin, I can't know how many times my daughter watched it. But Jonathan, good singing. You should team up with her. She sings, it's a whole new world with new horizons to achieve. Maybe a thousand times. We're driving down the streets. Mommy, it's a whole new world. I cannot see. Don't get me there. But all I can remember from the Disney movie is that it's a whole new world with new horizons to achieve. There was an evolution. Disney was capturing an evolution. Whatever was happening in the world, Disney was typing the script. Disney was rewriting the script. And the inquisitive me, I said, where did Disney get this from? And I said to myself, they hire preachers and they hire theologians. And all I could think about was this passage where Jesus Christ says, I'm going to show you a whole new world. Because he was tired of answering questions as to who he is and who he isn't. And as to how our future lies and to how to define faith, the substance of things we cannot see. So Jesus Christ paused in that new world. And he says, I'm just going to put this to rest. And he says, there's a kingdom of, called heaven. And he says, it's going to be like a wedding banquet. And like the Disney movie, he interjected himself. And this banquet is going to be for the sun. That's what Disney did. In that movie, Disney interjected Aladdin. And all our thoughts went to Aladdin. But when we pause, I know the movie's probably too long gone because it's 1992. The main character who sought love in that movie was not Aladdin, was Jasmine. And Jasmine sought love. But Disney typecast said Jasmine that her voice was not heard. So, as an adult, for me, my child listening as a female, if she grew up watching Aladdin, she probably thinks she doesn't have a voice in this world. So let us backtrack. Let us go back to the time when there were Jews and Gentiles. No Catholics, no Protestants. Simple. Jews and Gentiles. And that's the last time I'm going to say that. A chosen race and a race that was not chosen. Jesus Christ said, I'm going to put this to rest. In this new world, the king is going to do something skillfully different. And Disney captured the difference. Disney's on target. So in 1999, Disney created a world where the main character who was seeking love, seeking to be appreciated, didn't have a voice. But in 2019, 
Disney did a remake. Disney did a remake. An evolution took place. A whole evolution. In this new world, Disney created a new song, a new theme song for this new remake of Disney. And in this new, re new song, Jasmine got a voice. You see where I'm going? Jasmine represents the Gentiles. In this Bible passage, in this scripture, those who were chosen turned their backs on their king, who's the Lord of Lords, the God of Gods, and said, I'm not coming. They got to save the date. When the time came for the banquet, the they, they got special persons coming to them. Come on, come, come. Did anyone call you to come to church this morning? You came off your free will. But this is a God I know. The God who loves us so much that he had a chosen race and he not only gave them a save the date, but he gave them an invite. Come, come, come. What did they do? They are our typical Farmers, businessmen, others of us, nurses, doctors, lawyers, teachers, stockbrokers, you name it, the garbage collector, the frontline workers, you work at Jewel, you work at us, you work at wherever, the others. They turned their backs. They did not use their voice. Nowhere in the text said they used their voice. They just went their way. So they remain what? Come on now, talk with me. They remain what? Speechless. And what happens when we remain speechless? The scripture says, the king was what? Enraged. Everybody see what's happening? So in the world where Disney had typecasted Jasmine without a voice, a revolution started to happen in this world. Because we live through it, we don't notice women's rights, gay rights, lesbian rights, economic rights. We have the World Trade Center going down. We have terrorists. Everybody else was having a voice. Where was the church? Did we turn our backs on the king? That's not a topic here, but that's a question for us. Were we speechless between 1992 and 2019? I doubt it. The reason why I doubt it is that the society would have had to put some pressure on Disney to remake Jasmine. An evolution took place. Something revolutionary took place. So Jasmine was remade. And this new Jasmine says, here comes a wave meant to wash me away. Are you in a space today where you feel as if there's a tide, there's something happening that's washing you away? You can't seem to get a control of what's happening. There is COVID. 11 point something million persons are unemployed. We are in a space of revolution with an evolution taking place. So what Disney did? Disney said, I'm going to remake Jasmine. I cannot touch the old Jasmine. What did God say in this? To the old chosen people. Then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready. But those are invited did not deserve to come. That old Jasmine, that voiceless, speechless Jasmine could not make the cut for the new Aladdin. Though she seeks love, she had to be recalibrated. As Christians, though we seek Christ, we must allow ourselves to be recalibrated. And in this new world, Jasmine paused. 
but I won't cry. Do we as Christians find ourselves crying? And it's possible. Sometimes we feel we did not make the cut. We feel as if there's a wave. We can't leave our businesses. We can't do, and I'm guilty. I'm guilty to the T. I work 12 and 14 and 16 hours on a job. And I go home so tired that sometimes when I start to say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I fall asleep. So I'm first to say, I am the old Jasmine. But what did God, our loving Father, do? Yes, he was enraged. And yes, he did something that we don't associate God with. He measured unto those who measured unto him. Those who murdered, he killed them. So we're going to gloss over that for a while. But what did he do? He came for you and he came for me. He said, so he sent his servants. Go to the street corners and invite the banquet. Anyone you can find. Anyone. So today, in this great country, it's always a pleasure when I have a conversation and someone says who you are, and I say I'm Jamaican. But if I have a conversation with someone else and I say who are you, I get I'm a quarter Irish, I'm two thirds, you know, Polish, I'm, we break it down. But in this banquet, Jesus Christ didn't care. The, the King of Kings did not care who you are. So that's the church today, right? We're here and God does not care who we are. What is it that is important is that everything that we need for that banquet, everything that we need for that banquet, and I, I pause on the word banquet because although there's a wedding and a banquet, back in the day, the banquet was everyone could attend, but the wedding was special. And this is where the switch took over. So like in the old Disney, when they remade Jasmine, Jasmine said, I won't be silenced. The new Jasmine says, I won't be silenced. You can't keep me quiet. So in this remake that God did of his church, of what the kingdom of heaven is going to be, what the king says is going to be, he came out, and what did he do? He inspected a man, and I'm going to say a person. It could be anybody, any one of us, because I use Jasmine to see that sex doesn't matter right now. You could be a man or a woman. God is going to inspect you. There is going to come a day when God is going to inspect this crowd. And that's a challenge. The challenge is, as people of faith, we love the Lord our God with all our heart and with all our soul. Because that's the commandment. But we forget the one step down where it says our neighbors as ourselves. So we suit up every day and we dress the part outwardly. We don't have anything showing, no skinny dips, no nothing. Because we are Christians. When we go into our workplace, when we go on our farms, when we go into our businesses, someone says, there goes a child of God. But to this king, the challenge is, to this king, none of that matters. Your outer garment does not matter. To this king, our outer garment does not matter. To this king, what matters is how on earth you got here. How did you come to, to worship Jesus Christ without being properly clothed? How did you get here? How can you say you are my friend? How can you say you are a friend of Jesus Christ when you didn't get suited? And friends, I'm going to tell you, sometimes it's just a simple, I don't have the time. I can't leave my farm. I can't leave my business. Grandparents can't leave their grandkids. Mothers can't leave their babies. For years, I traveled with my kids in my car. Teachers can't leave their students. Sometimes it's just a simple glitch. 
So the challenge is this morning. Because we are not fully clothed, God sees our heart and he knows that there's something wrong. And Jesus Christ, what he did, he tapped into our faith bank. He gave us a blueprint. Have you ever stood in a building? Is there any architect here? When you stand in a building, do you know the depth of the foundation? If you knew it, you probably wouldn't be here because it's feet and feet and feet down. So what God did that day, an evolution took place. The evolution took place. He says, you are not the chosen. I don't have any chosen. We are all chosen. And I say to my sons and my daughters when they are going to school, I say, in the world of kings, there is none. In the world of God's kingdom, we are all God's children. There is no chosen one. So the challenge is, there is going to come a day, and maybe the day is today, where God is going to look, he's going to come out, and he's going to look into your blueprint. Let's see what the body is made up of. Our hands and our feet, our voices, and he's going to go straight to the heart. Because unless you can tell me how you can live without an, a heart, I don't know. And he's going to find that space. And he's going to search for righteousness. And when he search for righteousness, a lot of us are going to be like, I don't even know the definition of that word. But Jesus Christ must have gone to a very good school. Because he used words that were so powerful. Righteousness is everything that is opposite to what this man did. This human being did. When God said to this human being, he said, how did you get here? without the proper clothing. The question is, are we clothed today? Are you clothed properly for God? Is your heart in the space where God needs it to be? Dawn Marie Nivens Gardner, you have taken the invitation. My friends, we are all invited. Therefore, we we accepted God's invitation. We are here. But is there something that when God looks in your heart, when he looks at you, because he's a God of God and he's, he's the greatest, no one can see what's in your heart. He could not blame his servants for letting you in. The church attendant could not get blamed for you being here today. So I speak to us as a church today because this is a banquet. Every time we meet as people of God, we meet as a banquet. Every time we go outside there, we are a part of that banquet. We are a part of that banquet. And when we get in here, we want to be able to, when we leave this space, or when we sit in this space, we join in the marriage, the wedding. We want to join in this wedding. It demands our life, our soul. It demands every part of our being. So the question is, are we speechless? Is there a part of your being that you have not given to God? Don't feel guilty. Maybe if the man had said, I don't know, he would still be in the banquet all. I cannot assume anything from this passage because it's skillfully and beautifully written. What I know for a fact, he remained what? Speechless. But what did Jasmine, the remake, Jasmine said? I will not be speechless. As a black woman of Jamaican descent, I cannot afford to be speechless in my country. Whenever I go home, I have to say what I see. I may not be popular. If my nieces aren't doing right, I have to say it. Because God has put us in this place as stewards. If we must be friends of Jesus Christ, if we must be friends of the Son, if we must participate in the marriage, because nowhere here tells us what a marriage is. It, all it tells us is what is provided. All it tells us is what we must do. But as United Methodists, we hold this marriage as one of those high points in our lives. We tie this marriage 
into the baptismal. Skillfully. If you are married in the United Methodist Church, you should be baptized in the blood of Jesus Christ. You must declare the love of Jesus Christ. So that's the challenge. Let me talk a little bit about neighbors. I'm in uncharted waters. Elgin is beautiful. But have you spoken about what takes place on Michigan Avenue as a church? Have you deep, dug deep into your heart as to what happened to Brianna Taylor? Have you dug deep into your heart to ask ourselves the question, why our neighbors can step in the neck of someone and think he can breed? Or have you kept speechless as a church? Is there dialogue going on that pierces your heart and asks yourself the question, how can I speak? And some of us, when we hear speech, we think we need a platform and we think we need a march. I do not march. I'm a Jamaican. We, I have marched all the marches I can march. But what this speech requires, and this is the good news, this speech requires that we honor the son, the son whose banquet was planned. And how can we honor this son? We can just take ourselves back to Calvary and believe that he rose from the dead. And we can believe that when he rose from the dead, he did exactly what this king said we are to do. Go to the byways and highways, he said to his disciples, go to the byways and highways, open your mouths. You must speak as a Christian if you have a voice. He said, open your mouth, call every single one you can call. But Jesus Christ skillfully tied this up. He says, convert them. Baptize them in the name of Jesus Christ. So you cannot get to the wedding unless you get to Calvary. And unless you believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead that day. And you must declare it in your heart. You must declare it in your mind. You must declare it in your speech. We are disciples of Christ. And guess what? When we want to disassociate ourselves from this man, study this man, know this man, know him. Because the space that he's going, he's going to be crawling on one hand and one foot. And there will be nobody. And you're going to ask me why one hand and one foot. Jesus Christ said, the day is going to come when we remain silent, when we... Refuse to be remade by his blood. When we refuse to be remade by his blood. And we keep silent. Even Disney got it right. Jasmine said, I won't be silent. I will not be silent. I will not be silent. This man who was silent. God the king said, I'm going to take one hand and I'm going to take one foot. I have read about 20 Bibles. I have looked about uh, 200 no Bible said he bounded his two feet. No Bible said he bounded his two hands. Do you want to be crawling in outer space on one hand and one foot? It's a miserable death. It's a miserable death. Disney did not add that. Disney got skillful. So today I say to you, my brothers and my sisters in Christ, those of us who are fearful to speak, and it's okay, I was a shy child. My grandfather always said, Donna, get your voice. I didn't know what he was saying. But today I say to you, Elgin United Methodist Church, you're poised here for a reason. Get your voice. Get your voice. Because the day is going to come when all of us are going to be there. And some of us will be sitting over there waiting. And God is going to choose you or me. And if we can't answer why we did not get properly clothed, why we did not ask Father the Son of the Ghost, and when we did that, why did not we love the Lord our God with all our and with all our strength? And why did not we love our neighbors as ourselves? Visit the West, the Chicago. I live there. I live there. There are your neighbors. There. There are children going to bed hungry. 
their children going to bed hungry in this great country. But I also I praise God. I want to praise God for you because the that's on here, the chosen, and that is who we don't want to be in this passage. Pay attention. That chosen one got thrown out. So while we think many are called and few are chosen, we are among the many today. And I thank for each one of you because you believe that you're called. But I ask you just, I ask myself, be clothed. Be clothed. Speak. And if we can't, I know you guys are doing right. I know you are doing right, but be sincere in it. You have your prayer meetings. You have your Bible study. You have your outreach. You have everything. But remember, on that day when we are required to speak, the day when we are required to speak, it will just be you and your maker. It will just be you and your maker. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say to you today, find your voice, because Christ found his voice he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. If there's someone in here whose voice is being tainted because of something you can't forgive, this is the time in the worship service where you stop and say to him, Father, King of kings, forgive them. Forgive me. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Hold me in righteousness. If you'll join me in prayer. The God, the King of Kings. Let us be friends to the friendless. Let us walk with the, those who cannot walk. But most blessed God, let us speak for those who don't have a voice. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.
Friends, wherever you are today, go forth, strengthen to do the work of Christ, standing in the gap, extending the invitation to the eternal banquet, rejoicing in God. Let your gentleness be known to everyone, and don't worry about anything. The God who created you, the Christ who redeems you, and the Spirit who empowers you, is with you today and evermore. Through Jesus' name, amen.